Hey guys, happy Friday. Hope you guys are all having a great, great Friday. So I'm sitting here, it's the next day. I'm sitting here on my lunch break with my yarn. And I, I had planned that I was gonna like start this yesterday, but very noisy car just went by. <laughs> so yeah, I was actually planning to start this yesterday, but I don't know, once I was done filming and I wanted to get a snack yesterday and yeah, so I just kind of put it off. So I was like, you know, I'll wait until tomorrow and just start fresh. So I am going to be making the beginner crochet hexagon cardigan for adults. And I've watched the video already, ready, just kind of see where I'm going. I don't remember, like I have to watch it again, following along or look at the pattern. Um, normally I like to just follow along with patterns because I think it's just a little bit easier for me to like mark off where I am and just pick it up if I want to work on it for just a couple of minutes. But I think for this one, I'm actually just going to follow the video because it seems like once I start going with the granny square, it's going to be like a traditional granny square. So it should be pretty easy, I think. So I'm just going to jump in. Um, the pattern and the video do suggest to make a swatch first. I know I should probably do that, especially because this is my first wearable, but I really don't swatch. I don't like doing it. Yeah, I'm just gonna jump in and it has sizes all the way from small up to 5x and the, small, and the sizes are kind of like grouped together like if you want a medium it's medium large so I'm, I think the medium large hopefully will fit and I do crochet a little loosely so I, I'm sure it'll fit <laughs> I hope. So yeah I'm just gonna jump in, I'm gonna open up my yarn. Um, I'm just pulling out the first one. I know like the pattern where they start at is different on each one. Oops, but I'm just gonna grab the first one out and I'm gonna get started. All right, so I have my yarn. I wanted to use my Clover um, crochet hook. The pattern calls for a size H and I somehow misplaced my Clover H hook and I went through some of my project bags thinking I had just like put it in there and misplaced it, but haven't been able to find that yet. So hopefully it turns up soon. But, you know, I do love the clovers, but I I love just a standard aluminum hook. I It's what I started crocheting on and I quite like it. So I have Marcus in front of me, so I can't really put my yarn where I normally would, but that's all right. That's right. Two. So I'm just gonna get started. I'm pretty sure- So let's begin. And even though this is a beginner pattern, we have tutorials available for beginners and you can uh, use those if you want to. They're here on our channel. And I like using a I'm really long tail just because I'm always afraid it's going to come begin. out. So right, chain four. One, two, three, and four. And insert the hook into the beginning chain and yarn over, pulling it through everything, and this forms the center ring of your hexagon. Make sure that the tail will just wrap around the outside of the ring just like that, and we'll begin round number one, just in a moment. Round number one, you're going to chain three, and that'll count as a double crochet, and in the same circle, apply two more double crochet in there. There's gonna be a lot of stitches going into the center, which will cause it to buckle within a few rounds that you'll see pretty quickly. All right, so I just started off, I did round one, and I just started off with the hexagon, and Really, Marcus is like on my desk, just scratching and shaking everything. But I just wanna make sure I have my spaces. And yeah, so I think we're good. I just tighten that up a little bit. I like working with super long tails because I'm always just afraid that it's gonna come undone. But yeah, so this is the start. I'm gonna keep going and see how round two goes. We're sitting, we're sitting on the top of this one, so we need to slip stitch over the next two, double crochet, and slip it, stitch into chain two space. And this is the fourth baby. Just 
going into the top of the first chain three. Okay, and so now you can see that it's sitting flat, but it won't sit flat for very much longer. In the next round, you're going to start to see it kind of wonky, which is what you're looking for. So to start a new round, number three, let's go. So all rounds now right to the end are the same. So you're just going to slip stitch over to get to the corner. So this would be considered three rows, or three rounds, one, two, and three. And so with the different sizes, we need to complete a certain amount here in order to do that. So let me take it to the sheet. It's sitting flat for now, relatively, but it will get rough. Let me take it back to the different sheet. So with the first color, we need six rounds. We're currently at three. For the extra small to small, medium, large, we need six rounds. Because we already have three done, so you just got three. All right. So. I just got started. I'm on round three. Look at my look. Just started with this brand new skein, skein of yarn. Already a knot. That's as far as I got before a knot. Part of me is like, should I just cut it and start again? But I'm just going to cut it here and keep going. I don't know, like, can you actually cro just keep crocheting with that little knot in there? I'm always worried that it's, like, gonna, like, stick out, I guess. So I always cut it. And see how far I can get. Do half of another one. Eh. I got really lucky with my day glow yarn because that one had very, very few knots. I have Marcus <laughs> stretching in. All right, so I'm pretty much now I get the pattern. It's pretty straightforward. Just pretty much a typical granny square but just some added corners to make it a hexagon so I'm just gonna sit here a while I'm gonna crochet on here I'm gonna see how far I get and once I've gotten a little bit farther in I'm gonna check back in with you guys and show you my progress so far all right so it is the next day and this is how far I've gotten so I just finished up using my very first skein of the Parrot Stripe yarn, and I love this color so, so much. I thought it was going to get me actually a lot farther than it did. I think I'm eight, I, I need to do 18 rounds, and I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So I am on round number 12 of 18, and I need to make two of these. So I'm surprised like how much yarn this is taking I thought this was gonna get me a lot farther but I do have six of them so I'm sure I'm gonna have enough but yeah I'm also really happy that I'm actually following along with the video because normally I would just go ahead and follow with the written pattern but the written pattern was like super long like I think it was about 20 pages to print out and I didn't want to do that so I have been following the crochet crowd and it's really I'm really happy I am because I probably would have been worried like crocheting this because it doesn't lay flat like I would have thought like I did something wrong but you need these extra pieces so when you fold it then it makes that sweater shape so I don't know it's starting to look like a sweater a little bit I have quite a few more rounds for this one side so I'm excited to see how it's actually going to turn into sweater size because I'm a little bit worried that the sleeves are going to get too big. I don't know. But it, do, it does have like puffy sleeves anyways in the picture, so I think it'll be fine. But we'll see. So I'm going to crochet some more on this and 
hopefully I can finish up at least I want to do I want to finish this first panel up first or I want to finish this first panel up tonight so I'm gonna spend some time I have my second one and I'm gonna just crochet some more and I'll check in with you guys and let you know how far I've gotten at the end of the day hey guys so it's Sunday and earlier a little bit earlier today I did finish the first hexagon for my cardigan and I'm surprised this took exactly two skeins of the red heart in parrot stripe this is how much I end it with like when I was going around this I did not think I was gonna make it so yeah so it takes exactly two skeins and I've gone ahead and I started the second hexagon too and yeah so it's an, I'm not worried about it like matching up because I want my colors to not be symmetrical so where this one started purple in the center this one is starting with the green so I, I love that mismatch look so I'm happy that they're coming out different but I am getting a little bit worried if I'm gonna actually have enough yarn because I have I started off with six of these and I thought that was gonna be plenty but it's gonna take me four of them just to do the two hexagons and then I need to do the part of the sleeve and then the bottom so yeah I'm I'm thinking I'm gonna look through the pattern but I'm thinking I'm gonna do the sleeves first and then I'll work on the bottom of it because if it comes out a little bit short I think that'll be fine I'd rather have it be a little bit too short then have one of the sleeves be missing or something so I'm gonna keep going and hopefully I don't run out of yarn so I'll keep you guys posted on how things are going hey guys so it is Monday and I'm on my lunch break again so I thought I would just take a few minutes and show you what I got done on my hexi cardigan over the weekend so this is the first panel and I'm doing the size medium large for this one and kind of what it's looking like so far so this is the first panel and this took me two exactly two complete skeins of the red heart yarn and I just finished up my third skein on panel number two so I'm a little bit worried if I'm gonna actually have enough because yeah it, it's going a lot faster than I thought but hopefully I do have enough if not I love this color so I will probably go ahead and order another pack because I bought a pack of six so I probably will go ahead and do that again if I do run out because I just love this color so yeah this is what I've gotten done so far I'm gonna go ahead spend my lunch break just crocheting and seeing if I can finish this panel hopefully I can finish this panel by the end of the day because I'm loving this project and I just really really want to get it done so I'll keep you guys updated and I will show you my progress throughout the day hey guys so the last time I checked in I kept saying like how I looked like I had so much more yarn that's gonna be left over for the second panel I was wrong I actually ran out a lot earlier so I have to finish one whole side of the hexagon and then a half a side and I just ran out and this skein of yarn had about three knots in it so I'm thinking that I probably ran out because I was changing yarns so much I guess changing yarns a lot more than I was with the other one so I do have quite a few you know the ends like yeah where I had to do this so maybe that's one of the reasons I ran out Hopefully they're not too much of a different size, but we'll see. So I'm probably going to be done crocheting on this for tonight. I don't know. I might finish up this one side, but I'm probably not going to start putting them together until in the morning. So I'll check in with you guys when I'm ready to start sewing these two panels together. Alright, so it is Monday and I have out my two panels and I'm done stitching them out and I just need to go back through now and do the part of weaving in all these ends. So I'm going to take some time, I'm going to sew in all my ends 
and then I'm going to get started on in this together and starting the next steps. So I have the first panel is done. All of the ends I think are weaved in. So I'm going to go ahead and do the second one. You know, just so I don't forget what the front of this is, I'm actually going to do like Mikey suggested and put a piece of scrap yarn just so I can easily tell what is the front. I'm pretty sure I can tell, but hey, if I do this, I won't have to worry about making a mistake, huh? So I went ahead and I watched the video again on how to sew these together. Pretty sure my string is like way longer than what I'm going to need, but rather have too much than too little. So basically, according to the video, we just need to go into these corners and then you make a slip knot on one end of the thread, put your needle through that. And then pull it tight. And let me just make sure because I'm supposed to make sure that I have, yeah, the good sides are inside. Okay, so far. And then, so, so far, so good. Make sure this is nice and pulled snug. And then I just need to match them up. So this is the center. And so just go ahead and whip stitch down. I just want to make sure I'm actually lining these up correctly. I feel like they're not all the way lined up, so I'm going to put one right here. And then I can go through and chain one space. One, two, three. All right, I think we're good now. And I watched the video and the crochet crowd video. It said that you're supposed to sew through both loops. And I tried to match up my pieces because like how this one has a green edge, uh, this one has a purple edge. I tried to match up the ones that had the blue edge since I was at the blue spot of my color. So I thought it would like kind of hide it a little bit more. Okay, this is so long. I'm going to try to make it a little bit shorter. Yeah, I definitely didn't need this much on my to sew these together, but I just didn't want to run out. And then the crochet crowd video kept saying, you know, don't be afraid to pull it tightly. Just snug it down.
So I am to the end. And we're going to end vine just like the video said, make a loop. And then go through again. Copy another loop. Snug that down. All right, so this should be good. All right, so my panels should be one piece now. And I just need to go ahead and weave in the two ends that I just created now doing this. And I'll see what my next step of the project is. So I am ready to start putting together the sleeves and I just watched the tutorial again and it said you basically sew them together the exact same way you did the back seam and I'm not really worried about like if the sleeves match up for some reason I just wanted that back seam to match up make sure I'm doing this the right way yeah I think I'm good so I still have this on the wrong side the wrong side out And I'm just going to whip stitch. All the way down. Hey guys, so I want to check in. Um, I just put my two panels together and I'm starting to do the border at the bottom, but it's actually becoming sweater shaped. Um, I don't know if it's correctly shaped, but it kind of looks like a sweater. The only thing I'm kind of worried about are the arms, like the sleeves. The sleeves are like huge. I think they're too big, but I, I don't know how to fix that. I mean, I don't, I guess I could start doing some decreases or something, but I think I'm just going to keep following the pattern. Yeah. So it's becoming sweater shaped. You know, it's very, very thick. Just, I guess, just using like a regular worsted weight yarn. It's really, really thick. But I think this will be, even though the sleeves are huge and everything, hopefully it fits okay. But I think it'll be super comfortable, like when it cools off here and I'm just like sitting at my desk. I think this will be something really cozy to put on because I do love to have a blanket and it's basically a blanket. So I'm going to keep going. Let's see. And I'm working on the bottom now, so I'm putting, I need to put eight rows across the bottom. And I know I had said that once I got to this point, I was going to skip over and start working on the sleeves and do those rounds. So in case I ran out, you know, it'd be the sleeves that I ran out on. But I don't know. I just was following the tutorial, got going, and just moved on to doing the bottom. So this part is actually going really, really fast. I'm on the second row of eight and yeah, so I'm going to keep going and I will check in with you guys when I am done with the bottom. Hey guys, so it is Wednesday morning and I just took out my sweater, my cardigan again. And so far I did both panels. I sewed both panels together and then yesterday I worked on putting the bottom edging to it. So I think I have um, 
eight rounds to the bottom edging. So I did that. And the last thing I need to do is I need to add eight rounds to each of the sleeves. And so far I like this project. The only thing I'm a little bit worried about again are just the sleeves are really, really big. But I think that'll be fine. I'm just going to keep going. I'm going to follow the pattern as is and see and hopefully it turns out. So I'm going to work on the sleeves and then I will be done with this project. So let me get started on that. And once I am done, I will let you guys see my progress. Hey guys, so I forgot I wanted to show you guys. I actually decided that I would start a journal for my crochet projects. And the first project that I'm adding is actually my cardigan. So I've had this journal, it's just been laying around a while. It did have some other like scribbles in them, but I just tore those out and decided to start fresh and want to leave just a few pages at the beginning for like if I want to do like a table of contents or anything else I want to put like uh, paste in there. But yeah, I just decided I would start a little journal. So really simple, I just put a little banner with the name of the project, my start date, my finish date, the yarn I'm using, the hook I'm using, and where I got the pattern. And then normally like whenever I'm doing anything that has like rounds or like rows or something, I usually just use like a post-it note and make little tallies on it. But I decided, you know, I would just use my notebook and just make my tallies in here as I finish each round. So, so far I've done the hexes, I've done the bottom, and I need to start the arms. So once I start that, I'll start tallying them off here. And I'm also thinking that I'm going to take a picture of like the final project when I'm done. Take a nice picture of it, print that out, and then post it down here. And I'm also kind of maybe thinking about like maybe posting in some of the yarn labels. I don't know, just kind of make it like a little scrapbook. But just felt like, you know, just creating a little journal to keep track of my projects. And I was going to do this like digitally on my iPad, but when I'm like, you know, doing the little tally marks. I actually like to do that like on a little scrap piece of paper. So I don't know, just thought it was something I would try out. So hopefully I'll keep this going and have like a little catalog of all the projects that I've done. Hey guys, so I've done most of this project without having to frog. I did frog a tiny bit in the beginning when I was just setting it up, but for the most part, I didn't really frog. Well, you guys know I cannot complete a project without some frogging. So I had just finished the first sleeve and I was getting ready to start on the second. So I attached my yarn. I only had a little bit of the skein left and I was like, I'll maybe get one or two rounds, but I didn't want to waste it. So I was like, you know, I'll just attach it and start going. And I was getting ready to weave in the end because I had ran out. Or I was not weaving in the end, but I was getting ready to attach another ball because I had ran out. But some reason I started to think and I was like, I just started the sleeve, where's the seam? Because when you start doing the cuff part, there's a seam. And I was like going around and I'm like, I must have did an amazing job on this seam because I can't even find it. Then I realized I started working on the wrong arm. So yeah, I need to take this out. At least it's super easy. It's only a couple of rounds. And I'm happy I didn't go ahead and weave in that end in the beginning. Let's just go ahead and make it a really horrible yarn ball right now, but it's just a very small amount of yarn. I don't know, part of me is thinking maybe I will go ahead and just use the fresh one so I have less ends to weave in. But let's see. No, I think I am gonna, I know I hate wasting yarn and part of me is like I should go ahead and use this right now, but I think I'm gonna set it to the side. So this sleeve is done. This is the sleeve I need to get started on. So this is my last ball of yarn. I started off with six of these and I'm just using number six right now. I don't know, I keep looking at this little piece right here and I'm like, if I don't use it now, I'm not gonna use it. So you know what, I'm just gonna use it. 
So let's make a slip knot. And this one you're supposed to follow, start at the bottom, just attach it. I'm really bad at attaching. Okay, I don't know what I did here. Hold on. There we go. All right. And let's go. All right, so I just need to do eight rows going around here. And I am done with this project. So once I finish it, I'll probably just record a little bit of my, just like an overall, like a, I guess like kind of just talk about my experience making it, my thoughts on the project and what I'll do different next time, because I already have some ideas for what I want to do next time. So yeah, I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to go around and crochet the cuff to the sleeve. So I need eight rounds. And this part actually goes really, really fast. So I should be able to get through this rather quickly. It would have been really nice if I was able to finish like the sleeves without using my fresh one. So I would have a whole one left over, but that's all right. It's not going to take very much because I, I'll need to do about six rounds on the sleeve. So it's not going to take very much of that one anyway. So I'll have plenty to make another project. I don't know what I want to make with it. All right. So now this is the part that I was like, I didn't see this last time because I was on the wrong sleeve. I actually changed it up a tiny bit from the pattern here because you're supposed to add, you know, one of the sets of threes right here too. But I'm just going to skip that part because my sleeves are so huge anyway. So I don't think I need to make it any more large than it is. So any larger than it is. So I'm just going to skip that little bit. And I did it on the other side, and once I came back and started crocheting, it looked totally fine. Actually, I put an extra. I didn't want to put an extra single, an extra chain there. But yeah, so I'm going to just keep crocheting around, get this done. And I should be done pretty quickly, and once I'm done, I will show you the finished project. Hey guys, so I am finished with my first Cardi, my very first wearable, and I love it. Did it come out perfect? No. <laughs> Does it have a lot of problems? Yeah, but I still love it. So love how it turned out. This is the first time that I actually have created something that I can put on and wear. And it's very, very comfortable. It feels like I'm just wrapped up in a blanket, which is, I love that. Um, yeah, so I think I can see myself really using this a lot when it does finally cool off. Just like sitting at my, sitting somewhere, sitting on my bed, sitting at my desk, wrapping up in here and just like watching some YouTube and relaxing. It is a little bit bulky because it, it feels exactly like I have a blanket pretty much on. So I don't think like I would actually wear it going out somewhere. I think it's just be a little bit too bulky, but I think inside just relaxing, it feels absolutely perfect. Um, so when I was making it and I got to the part where I started putting it together and seeing how big the sleeves were, I was a little bit concerned because the sleeves are huge. And at first I was like, oh, that's just going to be too big. But I continued on with the pattern as is. I didn't really do, I did very few changes. I just followed the pattern mostly and left the sleeves pretty big. And actually I, I like that because again, I'm not going to be wearing this out really. It's just going to be something for me to relax in, stay warm. 
here when it finally cools off. So I think having these big sleeves are actually quite comfortable. And the sleeves are not super long. Like I followed the pattern, but they just go like to my wrist, which I think is perfect. Normally I would want the sweater to be a little bit longer than that. But since I'm gonna be using this just like inside, you know, when I'm crafting and that kind of stuff, that length is perfect because it's not gonna get in my way. If I'm trying to crochet or something, it's not gonna be in the way. So I think that is perfect. Um, yeah, so I do love how it turned out. I absolutely wanna make some more of these. And I think when I make the next one, I'm actually gonna use a different type of yarn because for this one, I use just Red Heart Super Saver in the color Parrot Stripe. I love this color. I think it's so, so pretty. I know it doesn't have my pink, but it's so pretty. And the more that I worked with it during this project, the more I started to love this color. So I want to find another yarn that I think is thinner and maybe not acrylic. So I'm totally new to making wearables. So I, I really don't know what type of yarn I would use because I want something that's not quite as bulky and I guess just has a little bit more drape. Cause like for something that I'm just gonna use like basically like for a blanket, it's perfect for. But I think if I want one that I'm more likely to like wear out, I wanted to have just a little bit more drape and not quite as bulky. Um, and for this yarn, I had six of these and this is number six. It took all, it took just over five to finish this. And then I had about six rows on the sleeve that I had to use my new one for. And I have no clue what I'm gonna actually use this for. I kinda wanna make something matching my little, my cardigan, like maybe make a hat or maybe make some arm warmer so in case it is chilly and I do want my wrist covered I can make some wrist covers or something or some fingerless gloves from you know using one of the patterns from last from last month's things we're making Thursday so I don't know we'll see but yeah I love this color so I'm definitely going to use it for something else um so yeah if you guys do have any suggestions for what type of yarn I could use to make another one of these that would give me that drape and not so bulky please let me know because I'm totally new at making wearables this is my first one <laughs> and this thing is warm like I'm all I just put this on for like what five minutes ago and I'm already melting <laughs> the weather here is back hot which I don't understand it's October how is it a hundred degrees and it's October I don't know but yeah we got like a little dip in the weather and it went down to like the 70s and I was like summer's over it's time for pumpkin spice and then the weather just was like nah we're still here and just like got back up to 100 so yeah <laughs> so hopefully it does cool off and i'll have a chance to actually wear my cardi because i love it i want to wear it but it's just it's too warm <laughs> so yeah um i think looking at it there are a lot of things i want to change i think the sleeves are too big i want it to be just a little bit more fitted not quite as bulky if i had to rate this like out of 10 i would for my first wearable I give it a five. I, I do like it, but I just see a lot of spots that I could improve on. But for my first wearable, I'm totally, totally happy with it. So yeah, so I am excited. I am happy to be done with this. I started this last Friday and today is Wednesday. So I did get through it quite a, little, a lot faster than I had been. And I think just because I wanted to record a little bit more of my process, since this was my first wearable, I thought it'd be kind of fun just to kind of document what I what it was like for me. So hopefully that was okay. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Thank you if you did watch it and I appreciate that so much. Um, I do have lots of ideas for things I want to crochet next. I do want to do some smaller projects since this one was kind of like a long term, took me a while. I want to do just some smaller projects and probably the first one I'm going to work on is going to be another one of the things we're making Thursday challenge. So I want to do Christo's reversible pumpkin. I'm trying to decide what colors I want to use for it. You know, I don't do holidays. I don't celebrate like Halloween or anything, but I do love like seasonal things like fall decor. So I think making a pumpkin for me is like perfect because I do, I love, you know, anything that's like autumn and fall that I love. So I'm trying to decide. Part of me is like, should I do like a nice neutral color pumpkin 
or should I do a pumpkin that has some of my crazy colors? So I don't know. I'm going to get started on that soon. I'm going to check out Christo's tutorial and hopefully post some videos about that too. But for now, this is going to be it. So thank you guys so, so much. Thank you guys for watching, liking, subscribing and all that. I appreciate it so, so much. And thank you guys again for all your help with Cody and Cody's doing great. He's actually under the bed sleeping, which is, <laughs> which is kind of nice. He's been getting into a lot of stuff. His leg is, his leg is doing better and he's becoming more and more active every day. So happy about that. But yeah, so that's going to be it for me for right now. So I want to just say again, thank you guys, and I will see you guys soon. And as always, I love you, and I'll be posting some more videos. Bye, guys.